Asprey continued his prolific scoring spell for Kilmarnock against Hearts at Tynecastle, and that one has finished at 2 all. Well, Hearts Kilmarnock has finished at Tynecastle. Let's get the story from Neil Henderson. Yes, Rob, this was one of the most outstanding and erratic matches which have witnessed at Tynecastle in a few years. Kilmarnock returned to Edinburgh after losing here 3-0 in September on a revenge mission, aiming for a win which would have taken them above Hearts in the table. In the first half, Kilmarnock were on top and took the lead in five minutes. Mitchell crossed to Brown, but his shot was blocked by Nelson, and Steve Maskery netted the rebound. Thirteen minutes later, Kilmarnock went further ahead. Tom Brown picked up a corner and netted his fourth of the season past Nelson. But in a spell of two minutes, Hearts hit two through John Miller and Gary Mackay to grab a point. The Rugby Park side could have gone ahead in 71 minutes. Mitchell was brought down in the box by Miller, but Tom Black missed the resulting penalty. A point for Kilmarnock, enough to continue the battle against relegation. Final score from Tynecastle, Hearts 2, Kilmarnock 2. Neil Kilmarnock's 3-1 win against Aberdeen last week was almost submerged under the Willie Miller headlines, but they're clearly a team who are going well. Certainly, they've they bought from the transfer market. Uh, Colin McKee, of course, and Neil Whitworth and Alec Dalton, a very experienced manager, and I think he's going to do well and keep them in the Premier League. OK, thanks, Neil. A uh, point apiece at Tyne Castle Hearts to Kilmarnock to the only other match played today in the Premier Division because of weather reasons was Hearts to Kilmarnock to at Tyne Castle. John Miller and Gary... Henry's most recent playing experience was in a thrilling match against Hearts at Tynecastle. Kilmarnock's good form a week earlier against Aberdeen continued with Ali Mitchell's cross on the right, bulleted goalwards by Tom Brown's head. Nelson made the block, but Steve Maskery swooped for the opener. The contribution of Maskery again was remarkable. Freed by First Division St Johnston last summer, signed for the third time in his career by Alec Totten at the age of 32, and still scoring. Within 18 minutes, Kilmarnock were two ahead. Mark Riley's corner was met by another prodigious leap from Tom Brown, and Steve Maskery did just enough to squeeze the ball past Nelson. It really is amazing how often Brown, at 5 feet 7 inches tall, reaches high balls inside the opposing penalty box. For Maskery, it was goal number 9 of the season. By this time, Hearts had lost Dave McPherson through injury, but they hadn't lost their fighting spirit. Just short of the half hour, Stephen Frail's free kick was met decisively by the forehead of John Miller and Hearts were back in business. This was Miller's third goal in four matches for Hearts as a midfield player. He's another excellent attacking header of the ball. Within a minute, Hearts were level. A splendid run on the left by young Kevin Thomas ended with a beautifully conceived pass and substitute Gary Mackay made the most powerful statement in support of his case for a place in the starting lineup. Excellent awareness shown by Thomas and brilliant support play by Mackay. Two-two at half time and goals threatened constantly in the second half. Mitchell was enjoying himself in his sodden conditions, and once again it was Brown who produced a good save from Nelson. But Hearts also showed plenty of belief and determination. The Kilmarnock goalkeeper Dragi Jelekovic carried a measure of luck to enhance a fine performance. Alec Totten never settles for a draw, and the chance for victory presented itself when John Miller's rash challenge at Ali Mitchell gave Kilmarnock a penalty kick. There really could be no complaint about the award. Tom Black is as deadly as they come from the spot, but Craig Nelson pulled off one of the saves of the season to earn his team a point they certainly deserve.